So welcome today. We have a special session today, both of the class and of the King's Forum on International Disputes Resolution, with a very special guest, Luciano Tim, who, uh, whom I actually met in Berkeley back in 2007. And since then, he's become important. Most of my friends apparently have. I don't know what happened. You but, are. You are the only um, He is now a named partner in an important law firm, Cavalho Machado Tim Ilus, in Brazil, that just today won the Client Choice Award yes, yes. For, for Latin America. He's a, a very recognized arbitration expert in Brazil. He also teaches. He's a dean of the Jesuit Law School in uh, Porto Alegre in Brazil. So uh, nobody is better placed to tell us about recent developments in international arbitration in Brazil, which he will now inform us about. Thank you very much for being here. Well, thanks for the invitation. I'm very honored to be here, uh, especially with an old friend, Professor Holger, who used to have nice conversations uh, in Berkeley in 2000, back in 2007 or 8. And uh, since then, I knew that you would become an important professor. And meanwhile, I would be just you know, a practitioner teaching in the university. Uh, so we thought about uh, discussing arbitration in Brazil. I thought about some topics. Uh, some of them could be considered hot topics for international practitioners, especially with regards to what we call Lava Jato, the car wash operation. Uh, this has brought a lot of uh, arbitration cases, and uh, to the extent that we can talk about them, I would be happy to discuss with you. Um, please don't ask me about uh, Zika virus. I'm not uh, a <laughs> biologist, okay? Uh, and there's no arbitration with regard to that. Uh, but maybe the Olympics could have some arbitration issues as long as we have the Olympics, right? Uh, so that's another. I would avoid uh, political comments. I think it wouldn't be proper. But I'm happy to discuss if you would like to, especially because it has been uh, it's recorded. So you know, we should avoid in an academic uh, room to discuss politics. One good thing, I'm not sure uh, how many of you are Brazilians here. Uh, one, two, three, okay, four. Okay, so. Uh, Brazil has been considered a great uh, place for arbitration. Uh, its development has been recognized by uh, Professor Van der Berg as a, a good student. And being a good student, meaning that our courts has been enforcing uh, uh, the black letter of the law. Because sometimes in Latin America, I can speak better about Latin America. You have a good code, a good civil code, or good codes, but when it comes to the application, it's not the black letter of the law that uh, you know actually uh, is applicable. And uh, Brazil received an award about uh, most improved jurisdiction in arbitration in 2014. So we have we have been good students with that with that regard. And I think that's the general uh, statement that I would make today. It's a, it's a good case, a good case to be uh, studied by people who are not Brazilians, and Brazil could be considered as you know, a model, a ex good experience in terms of arbitration. And we are going to talk about it later on. I, I, I was imagined that maybe not all of the group would be Brazilians, and we should talk a little bit about facts. Okay? Uh, so 200 million people, it's quite a lot, not compared to India, right? India would be, I think, 2 billion people, but still a lot of people. Uh, in spite of the crisis, our GDP per capita is still, it's not triple anymore, but it's still uh, much higher than India. and and, and uh, and China. Uh, it's the largest Catholic country, even though it's becoming more and more evangelical. This is interesting, more than 15% of the population. 
might sound awkward for some of you guys, but uh, it's the second biggest Japanese community in the world. A lot of immigrants from Japan. Germans, hunger, yes, a lot. Before the Second World War, so they, they arrived in Brazil during the 19th century. It's the second biggest German community, second biggest, uh, biggest Italian, Lebanese. We say that there are more Lebanese living in Brazil than in Lebanon. And the uh, important Jewish community, and I think by and large, one good thing about Brazil that these people live uh, friendly together, sometimes in the same neighborhood, even. More than 25 states, so when we talk about arbitration, we must bear in mind which state are we in, because each state has its own jurisdiction like the US. We have state courts, and those state courts would uh, have arbitration cases. Some states' courts are more developed than others. Okay, we cannot generalize. In Brazil, it's, it's, it's hard to have this generalization. If you talk about Sao Paulo, Rio, Minas, and maybe the south, you have one picture. If you have the north, it would be a little bit different, and uh, you know, we have different uh, scenarios. Uh, we have around 100 million cases before the courts, 100 million cases. I think that's the biggest uh, amount of cases being trialed in court. And that is because everyone has the right to have access to the court. And if you say that you're poor, you don't need to pay. And the state would provide an attorney for you. Not only criminal cases, but also uh, uh, civil cases. And also, if you want to, it's not our subject, but I know that you used to write about this, access of health. So you can file a lawsuit and ask for the judge to tell the state to give certain medicine. And that's a lot of cases. And without budgetary constraints, because our judges think that uh, there's no limitation for rights. It is for someone who like law and economics, such as me, it's a bit awkward, but anyway, we could discuss this. But this is a, a good uh, environment for arbitration, and we're going to see that, because if courts take too many cases, what happens? People stay in line to get justice, of course. When something's for free, the consequence is to wait in line, of course, and to wait in line for justice. And then, if companies have the means to pay to have access to a more speed system, they would rather have arbitration. Or if I would have, since we're talking about uh, uh, new trends, mediation. We had a new, we can discuss that, a new mediation, uh, mediation law in Brazil. And I think mediation will boom in the next 10 years. Because we have already the experience of booming arbitration. So the next step, I would say, is mediation. Uh, we, and we can discuss more in details. It's true that GDP is decreasing. You can see 2015 minus 2. The projection of this year minus 3. It's a lot if you consider the size of the, com the, the country. So that's not a good news. But there is this joke about uh, lawyers. Lawyers could make money when the economy is booming. Then you do a lot of m and And lawyers could do some also decent money when times of price because then you have disputes because companies are having difficulties to fulfill the agreement uh, until they have the capability to pay. But I'm going to show you that uh, uh, for arbitration and dispute resolution as a whole, uh, this picture that economy, uh, the economist depicts was not so bad. I mean, there's, a, there's still another one here that the price really is uh, really bad, right? Uh, since I like law and economics, I decided to put here because then if you are discussing issues of Brazil seriously, um, I think uh, this picture is a, a little bit naive because in 2009, all the, the wrong 
decisions that the government was doing, what we would be capable of assessing here. The problems here were not created here, they were created here and maybe two years before when the government was over-regulating some sectors, when the government was uh, uh, creating the wrong incentives, giving public money to some companies that uh, maybe shouldn't be receiving those money. So if the economist was serious about this, it should, you know, maybe review its own opinion because maybe the price was not taken off. Or maybe just just a picture because things here was, you know, were not good. Brazil was taken off in 1994 when all the institutions, the right institutions, were construed. And I'm, talk I'm not talking about politics, okay? Uh, because now in Brazil, everything has been politicized, you know, if you're in favor or not. No, just trying to, trying at least to uh, uh, being uh, neutral. Um, if maybe you want to sit here, please. No? Yeah. You can sit here. Okay. Really important guy, you can sit here. Everybody see we got late. Sorry. Oh, yes. Um, and sitting here, yes. Um, so, what we can say about Lava Jato car wash operation? Uh, probably you have heard of it. Uh, let's talk about things that we can talk that become, became public. Petrobras is a state owned company, uh, it used to be one of the most important and richest companies in, on earth. Uh, it's still an important and rich company, but I will show you some figures that uh, you might find interesting. Um, and there's a good, we can find good news here actually. I'm not trying to be too optimistic, but uh, for a Greek country, let's say, Brazil, Russia, India, China, and, and uh, South Africa. It's good news that you put behind bars politicians and uh, important uh, shareholders of companies. Uh, I'm not sure we can find this, or we found, we can find this in the history of Argentina, Mexico, India, China, China, it's more complex, Russia, so, uh, people are very keen to criticize Brazil very quickly, and uh, once I learned from the British um, uh, ambassador in Brazil that uh, we inherited from Portuguese the attitude of speaking badly about ourselves. That's something that we have from Portuguese, uh, but we're not Portuguese, our country is not so small, and people should not exaggerate in criticizing the country because yeah, the country has only 100 and something years. If you compare to China, how long have been there, right? Even Russia, it's something that has been there for quite a long time. So for a small, oh, sorry, a new country, what has been happening is such a good news. It might have some effects or bad effects in terms of economics in the short run, but in the long run, if we make sure that our Supreme Court enforce the decisions taken by lower court decisions, I think in the long run, as a democracy, as in terms of institutions, it will be good news. Uh, more than 100 people being prosecuted. We have 30 federal prosecutors involved in that operation. Um, so, it's, and, and so it's something that has been taken seriously. Um, Petrobras was and still to a large extent is a great uh, uh, producer in terms of uh, advanced technologies for production of oil in deep and ultra deep waters. It's different the way that we produce oil in Brazil is not like in the Middle East that the, you know you just 
put some drill under the, no, you need to go to part the ocean and then uh, take the oil from that. The government has a control of the company and maybe that was one of the problems. If you ask me if I were in favor of privatization, we could discuss that. I will not give you the answer right now. Could be some answer. Other companies that were privatized did not suffer the same thing. Uh, but let's go to the figures. Forbes Global 2000. Petrobras was ranked number eight. Can you see what happened? In terms of destroying the value of the company? How the, according to what has been uh, discussed in media, uh, the situation was Petrobras was hiring uh, companies and paying more than, you know, the fair market value of the operation. And with this excess of money, this surplus that, you know, was not creating any value, there were kickbacks to lobbyists, politicians, and directors of Petrobras. Mostly to finance campaigns, you know, to win uh, a political campaign, the market uh, uh, and economist industry, they, they more or less have the figures. So to become a deputy, when you need one million. If you want you know, to become a president, you need a certain amount to spend in public campaigns public campaign. So I'm not discussing that they were corrupt by themselves, taking the money, and this could be also the case, but uh, at least some kickoffs were to make sure that they have the money to be reelected. Would it come as a surprise that they were reelected? I will not answer. Uh, Okay, so, and, and, and I think this is important because it's uh, something that always come up when I talk about Brazil, outside Brazil, and inside Brazil. <laughs> uh, so, uh, there's, a good, uh, there's a good news, good news that institutions are so far working. If the Supreme Court confirms, I think in the long run it's good. Uh, they will, this will uh, bring an effect to arbitration. We have a lot of arbitrations here. Let me come back. A lot of arbitrations here. Of course, about those I cannot speak, but uh, as due to confidentiality and other issues. But you can imagine because all those agreements are big construction agreements. So when people were thinking about disputes. Here, they are not thinking of solving disputes in that system that I told you about, in which you have more than 90 million cases. So this created a huge market for arbitration. And not only arbitration, for compliance. Another good news, I would say, Brazil has a compliance law. Uh, and if we consider also the BRICS, as far as I'm aware of, it's the only country who has it. Uh, in terms of Latin America, only Chile, who has been doing a good job a long time ago, yeah? and are collecting this uh, seriousness of their institutions. Chile is doing a good job, but it's a small country. Chile would, uh, is smaller than uh, my state in the south of Brazil, so it's easy to manage, but that's when people start telling things how Brazil should do and, you know, how we should have, uh, because Brazil has a public health system, and said, oh, but the, in Sweden, come on, man. In Sweden, they have 10 million people, and when they have immigration now, they're not accepting. Bring them to 200 million, and let's see if, how will that work. It's easy to give opinions on how people should do or not, but come here and do, you see? So, because, yeah, it's more complex, 200 million, so you have Lebanese, you have uh, Japanese there, it's not everybody you know, blonde with a certain uh, 
background, the same background is something, and I'm talking about sociology. I'm not going into sociology, but Durkheim has this view about how solidarity can be brought when you are everybody's equal. But when everybody's different, you need more than that. You need agreements, you need the state, etc., etc. So maybe if we see it in the short run, it's terrible. When you see it in the long run, maybe it could be a success case. I don't know. Maybe. But there's market. Several foreign law firms are working in those cases, either in compliance and also because arbitrations are related also to compliance issues because we can discuss legal issues. For instance, can I consider that uh, this agreement here was breached because the company did not fulfill the compliance law? Is an implied condition, is it not? So there are also discussions in terms of uh, material law here. Because when those contracts were made, were entered into in 2010, we didn't have the law. The law, the federal law anti corruption, is for, uh, um, I think it's 2014 or 13. So, can this law be used in related to agreements signed before or not? Is it public policy? So, there are a lot of uh, discussions here. Brazil. It, also, it's a good market for you. You can see Brazil is number three in ICC. It used to be seven, but because of so much disputes. So you likely have, if you work in an international firm, you would have a Brazilian client. So it's good that Brazil, for everybody of you, recovers. At least you have, you know, people on earth will have something to eat. Because that's another thing that I'll talk about. I do a lot of uh, agribusiness stuff, okay? Uh, Brazil has uh, one of the best climates, soil, water. It's good for the world, world that <laughs> these things is sorted. Uh, Brazil is eighth as a seat of arbitration, so it's not. Uh, I could say that it's like if you work in an international firm, you might have a case, even not only working for a Brazilian client, but spend some time probably in Sao Paulo, or if you're happy enough, the seat is real. <laughs> and by that time, Zika will be sold, okay? <laughs> we will have another president, and then, you know, we will have this sorted out. Uh, and Portuguese, that maybe is not for, probably there are people here who could speak uh, any Latin-based uh, language, uh, no? then it's easy to learn Portuguese. Uh, it's also a good uh, bet, uh, top five languages, because of Brazil. Not because, unfortunately, for my Portuguese friends, not for Portugal, and not because I'm against Portugal, just because of the size, as I just mentioned. And also because, probably, you, you guys have cases in, in, in Angola and, and Mozambique. Those are big countries in, in, uh, in Africa. Um, for the first time, we're going to have a, have you, have you ever been to Vienna in this mood competition? No? Uh, so in 2006, 2016, and 2017, we're going to have, as the applicable rules, the rules of a Brazilian institution, CCBC. Don't ask me why the major institution in Brazil is Brazil-Canada Chamber of Commerce. Americans are normally pissed off about that. How come we used to be your great partners? Well, now are the Chinese, first of all. <laughs> Secondly, uh, I don't know. We don't have as much business with Canada. But this, uh, the, the explanation is because we, we had uh, some uh, visionary professor who, who invested their time 20 years ago, and uh, that's why we have this well-reputed institution uh, in, ICC, in ICC, CCBC. Just to give you some figures, I, uh, CCBC uh, disclosure, I'm, I'm not uh, being paid by CCBC to make their marketing. It's just because it's easy for me to get the, their numbers. Uh, 
but okay, I work a lot for, CC, for CCBC, but uh, in CCBC, not for. Uh, the figures in 2014, 95 cases. In two, uh, I asked them about uh, uh, 2015, it's more than 100 cases filed. The case would last around a year and a half, that's the average of CCBC. It's not bad. The average of Again, it's hard to find the average of Brazil because each, um, I did some empirical work about state courts in Brazil and uh, their efficient varies a lot. You can find an uh, average of three years in the court of the south and eight, seven years in the court of the north. So, but by and large, six years to have your case trial. So if you compare to one year and a half, I think it's a good deal. Um, so when people start saying, well, arbitration is too expensive, Time is money, and there are a lot of costs here, right? Transaction costs, opportunity costs, so I think that uh, if you do the math, it might be the case that if you compare arbitration vis-a-vis -vis litigation in Brazil, arbitration could be more, more efficient in terms of economics. Because people sometimes, they bring theories from other countries and uh, they apply without uh, acknowledging the difference. Let's say, well, in the US, arbitration is less expensive. Well, maybe because there's no discovery or discovery is limited. So in Brazil, I think, if you do the math, it might be the case that arbitration could be more economically efficient. Uh, why um, we became a good student? Why we had so many cases? Um, well, I'm not controlling the time longer. So when it's well, the time, just say you have time. Yeah, yeah. Time out. Yeah, just send me the the red card or give me yellow card before. <laughs> oh, he's German. It's not a good idea to talk about football. <laughs> I'm not saying anything. I'm just being triumphant. <laughs> <laughs> okay. well, and, and I don't have any. any talk about football. Uh, okay, so we have a might be interesting case for those were not Brazilians to consider uh, our experience. We had a, a new law, so to speak, in 96. This law was based on the Musitro model, so we did it by the books and courts enforced it. So not only in the books, but in action. On the books, but in action. Uh, we ratified the New York Convention. We ratified the CISG. We have, uh, and I can discuss a little bit about the precedents if you want to hear about this, but uh, the precedents of the Superior Court of Justice are very in favor of arbitration. The lack of speci uh, specialization and speediness of state courts also create a good environment for arbitration. And I know if you're English, you can say, no, no, but before the, you know, Privy Council is very efficient. Or if you're German, before a, you know, a, a, a commercial court, I have some clients who are Germans or in-house councils from Germany or from uh, Holland, from the Netherlands, and they say, no, 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 we have this policy against arbitration. Yeah, policy that you create in Germany. Now I'm going to show you a court in Brazil. And then I show them. And then they, pick, they take pictures because they cannot, they could not even imagine that amount of cases. And then they take pictures and this Fancy companies, they all have these general meetings with the, all the in-house 60 lawyers, and then those guys show the pictures, you know. Look, how is João Mendes in Sao Paulo? Now, we are, all the cases are becoming uh, uh, electronic. So the, the paper, the records are disappearing, but it, you, you still can see. If you wanna really, people, when they go to Brazil, they like to do some favela, you know, uh, 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 sightseeing, etc. But if you are a lawyer, do some sightseeing as well in home mages. You enjoy that. Right? It's real world. Uh, so that created some room for arbitration. The development as well, foreign investment, I have some figures. In spite of everything that has been happening, Brazil is still number six as host for foreign investment, and we have not signed exit um, treaty. Can you say why? 
Yes, I can. If, uh, yeah. Uh, well, if you like to jump uh, to, to the debate, uh, well, I can because I have this. <coughs> yeah, I have this. I will, I will try to cover that. Uh, and if not, uh, just remind. And also, I put here a uh, economic crisis and Lava Jato also, it's an uh, interrogation, but uh, yes, I would say yes, it created also room for uh, disputes to market for lawyers. The fact that we have been good students, as I mentioned, uh, in 15 years, it's like what Brazil did with its industry. When Brazil became independent in 19th century, it was one of the poorest countries. And nowadays, if you consider the GDP per capita, Brazil is actually the average of the world. The world is not better than Brazil. The world, Brazil is a good face of the world. If you want to see how the world will look like, probably look at Brazil. And uh, it's not perfect, yeah, but uh, maybe it's a good, uh, it's a good average. I read a, an article, a I think it was a British uh, article, about in the and they say that in the future Europeans will look like Brazilians. That was the 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 point of the article because of the mixture. And I know that this could handle a lot of discussion, but I will avoid this. Then it comes, well, there's no so mixture and oh, okay, so let's avoid its arbitration. Uh, so the same thing as we did with, with our industry, we did in 15 years with uh, arbitration. Really 15 years ago, businessmen, judges were like, mm, arbitration, what is that? Uh, when I, I used to have a group uh, in the university to discuss arbitration, in special, and he was my student. And back then, the especially uh, procedural law teachers, mm, what Luciano is doing? This is not serious. How come a serious guy is studying like this, you know? Because jurisdiction might be before a judge, before, you know, this statism that we have, state ideology, but anyway. Uh, our law is basically, just to give you a hint, uh, as you know, the general, uh, what a good law would look like, arbitrability, uh, if it's a non-public policy right, we could submit to arbitration, uh, we have the separation of the arbitration clause and the agreement, competence, competence, we separate domestic from international, uh, arbitrator has jurisdiction for preliminary injunctions. I give a lot if you want to. Oh, oh, yes, yes, I did. So it's like when I say to my students, would you like to have uh, a teacher of contract law or uh, a surgeon who actually makes surgery? You know, that's my case, but sometimes I will not be here, you know, because sometimes when surgeon needs to help their patient, they are not in class. Yeah. And that worked for a while, but then my students decided that I was not going too much to the class. <laughs> and then I gave up that uh, uh, so many class. Uh, judicial review, only ex post. So there's no appeal. There's only the possibility of uh, putting aside the award afterwards. That's what I mean by ex post. And the possibilities of notification are quite small. Uh, we did the uh, empirical work. Uh, we hired a prestigious uh, university in Brazil. We, uh, we, we are now updating this uh, survey, but basically we had uh, almost 700 uh, decisions and only 14 nullified the uh, arbitral award. And it, it, it was important also to purify the market because when we passed the law, maybe not so serious institutions were you know created and they needed to be you know uh, put aside in the market. Uh, good application of the black letter of the law, interpretation in favor of the contracts. Um, let me see what I can uh, we have very uh, sophisticated decisions about for instance uh, the application, the, the, the possibility of uh, using the group of contracts and group of companies doctrine in one of the cases a subsidiary was sued 
in arbitration without having signed the arbitration agreement, but uh, the arbitration was extended to the subsidiary in Brazil. We have a, a good interpretation of that. It's a kind of controversial theory, I know, especially common lawyers don't like very much that theory, but well, it was a good interpretation. We can go back to that if you like. Uh, we also have a centralized system of recognition of foreign awards. Uh, and we discussed that. We, we thought that uh, it was better to having a, a centralized control because if you allow first instance judges to assess a foreign award, it could bring legal uncertainty because then we have consistency when uh, interpreting you know, the award and, the, and, and really our Superior Court of Justice avoid to get into the merits of the decision. Only some formalities, and for those who are not Brazilians, uh, those formalities can be, you, know, you need to, a stamp of the Brazilian consulate, or of the city in which the award was given, but, but it's easy to manage. I mean, the, no merits of the case. Um, and we have a recent amendment. Uh, to make sure that uh, maybe some points that were not sufficiently clear is now really and maybe now open for even more uh, use of arbitration. That's the application of uh, arbitration to let me put here to to the government, not international, but domestic. So. Government can be sub subjected to arbitration, and it has been quite common that uh, public partnership agreements, concessions, are now using arbitration with some uh, specificities, uh, only based on the law, not on, on equity, equity in the sense of equitas, not, not equity that of common law, uh, and uh, publicity, so no confidentiality to make uh, those are guarantees under the Constitution. Everything must be according to the law and public. But now it's, there's two cases and uh, before the Superior Court of Justice and the Superior Court of Justice accepted arbitration when there's an entity controlled by the government. And we're gonna see in the future the jurisprudence with regards to when the government itself is part. Um, Another thing that was made clear, interim measures, so yes, the, the, arbitrary, uh, the, the president of the tribunal or the, the panel could issue interim awards, uh, no, no, interim measures and also partial awards, yeah. Um, but before the tribunal is duly created, the state court could render Injunctions, which is well, it's good to have it clear. I think it was already, but any anyway. for those uh, Latin rooted countries, this is, this is inter interesting. We have a arbitral letter. This is something because arbitrators wouldn't have the power of doing things physically. We need the state. So suppose that there are, the panel wants to produce some document and the party is refusing, we can ask the court to do that on behalf of the tribunal. And this is the arbitral letter. A kind of rogatory letter, but not, be, not between court systems, but arbitration and judicial systems. A lot of people found out, but I think it was very helpful for arbitrators in Brazil. Um, and, and in corporate law as well. Uh, there's another modification that now it's clear that even if you're a shareholder and you voted against arbitration, you're bound to that collective decision. Before that was not clear that someone could waive its right to bring a case before the state court system. Now, yeah. So that's it. That's the, uh, if I need to put this, oh, yeah, that, that's the investment. Yeah. Okay, just to bring evidence that I have slides on. <laughs> um, yeah, Brazil has not signed it, and, and that is the first slide. Um, 
And why is that? Uh, the idea was that uh, since Brazil had been host of so many foreign investments, what would it <laughs> submit itself or submit its own sovereignty to a, a you know, arbitral tribunal? So, uh, if you are a foreigner and you are treated equally and you have access to a court system, which we, we think it's independent, we spend a lot of money on judges, uh, they make as much money as a judge in any European country. Uh, I'm not saying it's good, but just to give you a reference, not that poor guy well paid, you know, that need to sell the, the, the ward. You know? so, we spend 7% of, of our budget with the judicial system. So those guys are independent, so you would be treated equally. The Constitution provides you all the rights you need to invest. That was the theory. You can always ask, but now, what would happen? But you can see that still, let me see, look at here, the, the figures. I like figures because we stop talking about ideology. United States, China, Russia, Hong Kong, China, Brazil. This is not new, okay? This is, we need to update that. But as far as I could see, Brazil is six. India is coming up, Mexico as well. But people need to put money somewhere. And uh, you need always to find new markets. And again, every business, uh, uh, there's no way you need to, to, to uh, let me give you some, uh, uh, Examples, if you produce a paper, you need to plant a tree. And the first cut in Canada, another big producer of paper and wood, you need 20 years. In Brazil, because of the climate, is only seven. So Brazil, by nature, is three times more productive than Canada. So even with all these problems, it is still very efficient. Or soy, soybean. Brazil is the only country on earth, as far as I'm concerned, that you can plant two times during the one year. In the US, another big producer, Argentina, you can just produce one once. So in spite of everything, and you have water. And uh, this is something that uh, it's very could be, and there's a film about that, right? When water will become, become so much uh, scarce that will be like gold, like oil, right? So we have oil there. Okay, so uh, thank yeah. you so much. I actually already have a question, but <laughs> let's give other people a chance. But please make questions that I can answer. Only easy <laughs> questions. I don't want to embarrass myself before you know important professors. So <laughs> they will come and say, "Oh, brought a Brazilian, he could not answer a hard question of my students." So, so my question would be the. Uh, does not signing on to ICSID and BITs actually make a big difference given that public institutions now do sign arbitration agreements internally? And is that commonly used also by foreign investors? Or is there a certain requirement for foreign investors before they can sign such agreements? Well, I would say uh, the slides that I put here is because I, you asked me and I know that it's something very relevant. Um, I never did an, any arbitration uh, dealing with uh, foreign investment. It's not, as British would say, my cup of tea mm. as a result of that. Um, what I could say that uh, the government felt the need to accept arbitrations to bring investment in uh, concessions because the country needed infrastructure. To what extent the government will realize that uh, signing some bilateral treaties would bring uh, more investment. I think it's not not this government. Let's talk about maybe the future. And uh, for me, it's not clear what what can happen. It's really open. So uh, depending on the government, yes. Depending who is elected, if you have a more pro-market uh, uh, president, then. Uh, if you see the case of Argentina, I think it's a good case to compare what Macri did, more he's a pro-market uh, uh, executive. 
he started to, uh, in all the foreign investment <coughs> cases, he started settling to regain confidence because Argentina uh, has lost uh, all the confidence, right? And it's also a case of a country that uh, people need to invest in Argentina for the same reason as you have in Brazil and Mexico, I'd say. And maybe Colombia. Yeah, true. But Colombia has been doing such this move because then you have all this bargain theory uh, discussion. The case of Brazil, again, we, I think we should not look at Chile. And, and I don't want to, I was born in Chile, but uh, I, 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 it's not, uh, I would say that it's like uh, maybe two uh, obvious example, but in school. Remember you, when you were in school, the big guy never needed to be fit because he's big. The small guy needs to be fit and maybe doing judo or training because otherwise the big guy will kill him. You know, so <laughs> Brazil, it's like the big guy. So it's like, uh, you know, I don't need to do this, I don't need to do that. So maybe when we start to compare with another big countries, Mexico or... And they, I, I mean, they, I, I do think they have a reasonable argument. I don't think this is, there's very, very many investors who think of not investing into Brazil because they haven't signed on. No, but the mood nowadays, I remember, you know, like five years ago was Brazil, Brazil, Brazil. Yeah, and, sure. and probably, I think we had the discussion, I said, man, Brazil is just like the same. Oh, but Brazil, it's, it's the same country I, ra I was raised and things are the same. No, no, Brazil, Brazil. <laughs> now it's Mexico, Mexico, Mexico. I've been to Mexico, it's the same Mexico. And when I talk to Mexicans, it's like, it has been in Brazil now, it's more or less as, okay, we have specific problem that institutions might deal with, but it's the same. I mean, it's not, not no, no, now we cannot even go because I would be, you know, infected in the air by Zika. No, it's, it's not like this, you know. It has been more or less in... Yes. Another completely different question. Um, you uh, showed the corruption problem involved in Petrobras. Is one of the causes the high national content, not requirements, but the mm -hmm. if you want to succeed in a concession bid mm -hmm. for Petrobras, uh, I think we're up to 95%, an, an is that? No, 65%. 65%. But 65% local content. I remember that some of the bids on the offshore drilling had such a high local content requirement that someone did the calculation and said, well, now Brazil would need to build a fleet that is bigger than the British fleet, just in ships to fulfill the local content. So it was unrealistic, mm. uh, meaning it enabled uh, mm. uh, uh, an environment in which corruption could thrive. Is that, could that be one well, of the causes? If you ask through a law and economics uh, professor, I would have to say yes, because then you create the right incentive for corruption, right? I mean, you more or less created the market Speaking in theory, of course, you know, mm -hmm. uh, it's like creating a market in which just, you know, quite a few could dispute and then you sort of creating, uh, this uh, reminds me a discussion uh, among economists, because in the past in Brazil, we used to have the prices of the, uh, of the drugs and, uh, and medicines, drugs in terms of medicine, right? Uh, no, because once I was, I, I, I heard this joke. Oh, Brazil is good in producing what? Drugs? Ha ha ha. It's not the case. Right? Well, maybe it's the case, but uh, to some extent. But the government used to, to regulate and fix the price of drugs, medicine. Uh, and economists laughed because then it's a cartel created by the government. You don't allow competition. So now we, we, we give up from that. So if you create this kind of uh, market in which just a few could compete because you would need to produce there, and then maybe it's the incentive for a corruption to happen because you, 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 you didn't allow at that time the market to work. Let the South Koreans compete with Chinese and let them compete with, I don't know, mm. other uh, boat producers. Thank you very much. I'm sadly we already have to stop here because the next class will come in. Okay. The next event for the King's Forum on International Dispute Resolution will be in March with a member of the, a former member of the UN Committee on Economic, Social, and Cultural Rights, uh, and the next class will be next week.
Thank you.